This is Walter. At the age of 65, Walter's adventuring days are largely behind him. He has lived quite a life. He made a fortune in business, defeated all of his opponents, and gained the respect and reputation he always desired. His house, though, is empty. The walls are covered in family photos, but none of the people in them want much to do with Walter these days. It's hard for him to understand, but none of them really cared about the business success or a seemingly endless stream of money. Sipping the finest whiskey that money can buy and looking out at a view that would bring most to tears, Walter begins to wonder what it was all for. How does this happen? How do some of us build our entire lives around one goal only to find out that we miss the whole point? Walter, like many of us, had some baggage. He was abused as a kid, always verbally, sometimes physically. His father was never proud, never accepting, always pushing him to do more. Walter, as the person he was, was simply never enough for his father. The imprint our parents can leave on us in childhood is powerful, and Walter forever carried this chip on his shoulder that no matter how much he had, no one would ever think he was enough. He suffered from a chronic problem that most of us in today's day and age do an inability to be present and accepting of this moment in our lives. The baggage of our past casts a shadow over today, and this makes us look to a better tomorrow. The irony is, nobody has ever lived in yesterday or tomorrow. We all only ever live today. Don't be pushed by your problems. Be led by your dreams. Ralph Waldo Emerson was a 19th century American philosopher, abolitionist, and poet whose deep affinity for nature and humanity helped him understand the importance of day-to-day -day experience. Allowing the negative marks of our past to take up space in our mind makes us turn our backs on today and tomorrow, and we will be driven backwards even as time moves forward. If we let our trauma define us, we will build an entire life that is simply a monument to that never truly discovering and expressing ourselves. This goes way back in time to the Buddha, who said, The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn the past, not to worry about the future, or not to anticipate troubles, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. There is real scientific evidence that shows that when our thoughts are always future-oriented, we end up with much more anxiety and depression later in life. Think about it. If you are always holding off on being happy and experiencing joy until you hit some milestone, but every time you hit one, you set a new one, how will you feel later in life when it is time to settle down and relax? Will you even know how to live in the present and enjoy it? When we are always assuming the worst and concerned about what people think, we grow anxious and unhealthy. Our diet and sleep suffers, our presence becomes negative to those around us, and we run the risk of ruining our closest relationships because we are never attentive to them. Nothing is worth more than this day. If we start to value the now, to value the time we have with the things and people we care about, we can be more confident about safeguarding it. If we always think work is more important or that our family's reputation is more important than its health, we will always put that first and our lives will suffer. Your family doesn't need you to uphold their reputation. They need you to care about them day in and day out. Do this and you will be stronger than any rumor or judgment. Even when it comes to yourselves, which if we are being honest, we usually care more about ourselves than most other people. Your own happiness lies in how you're able to appreciate what's in front of you. Think of life like food. When we eat too fast and care more about quantity than quality, we can miss some of the best aspects of a meal. With a well-developed palate, a meal can be composed of more than just eating it and moving on to the next one. Each herb, the distinct textures, the delicate balance of various elements all become apparent to us when we slow down and pay attention. Life is the same way. There is so much depth to almost any movement that when we go too fast and always look forward to the next thing, we literally never live our lives. Life is a preparation for the future, and the best preparation for the future is to live as if there were none. It's not just about getting lost in the moment. We all care about our future, but this is also the best way to make a better future. If judgments from your parents, bullies, or society as a whole are on your mind when you plan for the future, are you really doing the planning, or are they? If you let go of the past, you can live in the now and follow a path that is truly yours. 
And then what could the future be other than one that is meant for you? If you were conscious, that is to say, totally present in the now, all negativity would dissolve almost instantly. It could not survive in your presence. As a creation of our own simulation of what will happen later on, the anxiety that bubbles up from thinking about what ifs simply does not exist when we are engaged in the now. In Through the Looking Glass, the sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the White Queen tells Alice that the rule in this looking glass world is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but never jam today. This offer from the Queen is representative of so many things in our society. From advertisements to social media to jobs, it is always happiness tomorrow and happiness yesterday, but never happiness today. We are always told to make sacrifices and get serious about today, to be productive and not waste time. We look back on the glory days of youth when we were free from cares, and we look forward to retirement when we can be so free again. All the while we are scammed out of the most valuable part of life, actually living it. All of this said, it's not easy to just hang up the trauma and baggage we all carry around from the past, but we need to understand how it works through us. Walter didn't plan to neglect his family, but he was so focused on proving his father wrong that he actually ended up proving him right. His father taught him that career success, money, and forcing one's way on the world were the most valuable things in life. And in working hard to prove to his father and himself that he was enough, he built an entire life around this principle. If Walter really wanted to prove his father wrong and live life on his own terms, he would have figured out what he truly values and lived that way. His happiness would have been all he needed to overcome this chip on his shoulder. Maybe it's your family, your community, or even a toxic relationship. Regardless of where it comes from, baggage is something that everyone deals with. Our past can haunt us in various ways, and it can come from a variety of places. But the choice of what to do with it is ours. Drawing on various schools of philosophy like Stoicism, Existentialism, Taoism, and so many others is a great way to start accumulating the resources and inspirations necessary to take the first steps. Part of Emerson's philosophy and something he believed passionately was that every human has the same capacity, and the key is just learning to see what's in front of them. But what do you think? Is there some element of philosophy or some experience you've been through that makes you think of something that we didn't cover? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.